Hi everyone and welcome to Quickfire Economics. So today's discussion is all about how does the economy work, especially from a national side. So it's a very vital concept how does this economy works, but it's very important that you understand it can also be very basic. So let's compare the economy to something. Let's compare it to a car or a vehicle. Now if you have a vehicle you need wheels to get it moving. And what are the wheels of the economy? Now these components of the economy, which is also the wheels of the economy, is very important to understand. Now I'm just going to list, uh, list them here in this video and then we're going to explain how these are linked and then we're going to explain how can you actually get your car or your economy moving. Now let's look at the components. The first one is spending. Spending of goods and services, spending on services, spending on goods, spending by the population and that's the money that you spend in the economy. When you buy some things you go and spend on goods. So when you go, go out and buy food today or you go and buy clothing or you buy anything else like a television then you're spending in the economy. Then you have something called production. Now production is all the goods being produced in the economy. That's the second component. Then you have income and employment. Those are the third and fourth components. So you have employment, people being employed uh, via the shops and then you have your income because people that are employed get a certain amount of income and then they go and use that income and spend again in the economy. So those are the components of the economy but how does these components actually link together? So let's just take an example. Let's just think about spending in general. Let's say there's some negative things happening in your economy that uh, stops people from spending money. This can be due to a recession, people feeling uncertain about the future, but they start not spending money and what happens? Let's think about it. If your spending goes down, what happens? People have less demand for goods and services, so obviously then production will go down in the economy. So remember when your spending goes down, there's less demand for goods and services, so the producers will have to decrease production. Now if they decrease production, let's say a factory have to decrease production, then obviously they will have to let some of their workers go. So employment goes down. So spending goes down, production goes down, employment goes down. If employment goes down, what happens? Income also goes down because these people who are working now for the factory and who are laid off don't receive an income anymore. So in general your income in your country goes down and these people won't have an income so they won't spend money. So the in decrease in spending uh, leads through a channel, leads through a couple of channels, but again leads to a decrease in more spending. So you can almost see the vicious cycle here. The decrease in spending leads to a decrease in production, decrease in employment, decrease in income, and then a decrease in spending again. And that's the vicious cycle. And that's how, also how you go from a recession into a depression. Because a recession, you go into a depression when this spending st still goes down and goes down and goes down and nobody or nothing can actually increase it. And we'll talk about factors, how you can influence that spending later on. But now let's look at a South African specific example. So in 2019, South Africa received a quite a big foreign investment influx from Nissan, the car manufacturer, who decided to spend 3 billion rand on one of its factories in South Africa by producing the new Nissan Navara in South Africa. Now if you read the news and you read that article, then you might just think, okay, well, this is probably going to help the economy. But if you're an economist, you must really go into detail and think how can this actually influence the economy of South Africa and what are the different channels by which it will influence the economy. So now you will say, okay, let's use our theory that we've learned, our five components or our wheel, and see how this influx of um, the Nissan or Navara factory uh, actually influences these five components. So obviously the Nissan Navara being produced in South Africa or the 3 million Rand will come via the production. So it will be an injection into the production side of the economy. Now if production in the, the Navara and Nissan factories goes up, obviously they will need more workers because if they increase their capacity, they will need more workers to work for them. These new workers will increase employment and these new workers will also receive income from the factories and they will use this income to spend more money. Let's say they start buying food and goods and housing utilities and everything, then the production of food and goods and housing utilities will also go up. Because remember, if they spend the money or if they receive this income and they start spending it, then someone has to produce it. So then production will again increase and spending will or employment will increase again in these production sectors like retail, food and so on. And so on, income of that group will increase. So you can understand the 
proactive cycle here where you have an increase in spending, increase in production, increase in employment, increase in income, and that leads to even more increase in spending, and this cycle continues. And this is what we call a boom, when the economy is increasing and almost the invisible hand driving the economy upwards. You understand? So this is all market forces that actually drive the economy. So let's talk about what happens now if you want to actually get this ball rolling or get these wheels rolling but you don't know how to now this is what we have we have actually we can use physical and monetary policy and this is where the government comes in the government can use their physical and monetary policy to actually influence the economy this is by doing various things in, using various instruments so the government can use let's say government spending and taxation so they can increase government spending or reduce taxation that will increase the spending in the economy or promote spending in the economy which again will increase production employment and income or the reserve bank can reduce the repo rate like recently happening in South Africa where they reduce the repo rate which again will promote more spending in the economy, more production and then more employment and more economic growth or income. So this, this is the way that uh, physical and monetary policy can be used to actually infiltrate or not infiltrate but rather um, get this kick this kickstart this wheel or this vehicle into moving and get these wheels rolling along so i just want you to understand these components so always compare the four components to the wheels of the economy and you need these four components to move in order to move forward and if they move backward it's about the decrease in spending leads to a decrease in production leads to a decrease in income leads to a decrease in employment so i just want you to think about that and the beauty of this is that even though you if you're walking into economics for the first time or you're on a PhD level, this theory and this basics of economics still remains the same of how the economy works on a country or macroeconomic level. So it's very important to understand that and this is a, the way each and every country that has these components can actually grow, is by using their policies in order to make sure spending goes up which will lead to production, which will lead to more employment, which will lead to income, which again will lead to more spending. And as you can see the cycle continues and some economists even call it a snowball effect because you start off with a sm small snowball but it becomes bigger as it rolls on and on and on. So I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and really think about the economy like this and always keep it in mind because no matter where you are, you will always read about uh, things like production going up, like income going up, like spending going up in the economy. And then you can tie these news events like the Nissan increase, the foreign investment increase from Nissan, like certain events in South Africa and other countries, and you can tie that to the macroeconomic performance of the country and how the economy can use these different components to grow. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to use, watch more videos, you can subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. God bless. Goodbye.